The Avengers vs the Peter Factor, my personal redo. By Midnight Wolf 2192, Chapter 3, Rhodey. Rhodey had first met Peter Parker on the battlefield. At the time, he only knew him by his alter ego, Spider-Man. But that was technically their first meeting. During the fight, Rhodey had been suitably impressed by the aerodynamic abilities of the spider kid, but was stunned when he said things that revealed his age. Calling The Empire Strikes Back that really old movie kind of cemented the fact that he was young. After Rhodey had lost his legs, he spent time in the med bay recuperating. One day during his recuperation, Tony had entered his room with a small box in his hand. Hey, platypus, Tony said softly. He had been subdued since Germany, but had been even more so since Siberia. And if Rhodey had had the use of his legs, you could be damn well sure that Cap would not have been walking away from that. It's one thing to leave an enemy wounded in a place like Siberia, but it's another, entirely more horrific thing. Entirely more horrific thing to leave someone you once called a friend. The other man hardly ever smiled anymore and no one could pull him out of his depression. Even Pepper was struggling. Hey, Tones. What have you got there? Tony asked. Rhodey asked as he placed the book he had been reading down on the table beside his bed. It's a present for you, from the Spider Kid. Tony replied, and the soft smile on his face made Rhodey smile too. Rhodey took the box and pulled the card off. Dear Colonel Rhodes, I hope you are feeling better soon. It was an honour to fight beside you in Germany. It was an honour to fight by your side in Germany. Enjoy the gift. The instructions are inside. Get well soon, Spider-Man. Rhodey opened the box and lifted what looked to be a small, spider-shaped robot out. He placed the little spider on his lap and pulled out the little handwritten instruction manual. This is Spidey. He's a personal drone. He can be used to send messages, fetch people or items, and fetch people or items. Scan the QR code with your phone for the app that helps you control Spidey. Spider-Man made me a drone, Rhodey said reverently as he looked down at the drone. Tony let out a laugh and Rhodey smiled. Hand me my phone, Tones. I want to see what this little guy can do. For the rest of the afternoon, Rhodey and Tony played around with Spidey, and when Peppa came in to check on them, she could only laugh at the scene in front of her. Surrounding Rhodey and Tony were pillows, blankets, bottles of drink, food, books, and a host of other items that Spidey had been sent to retrieve. Four months after Germany, Rhodey heard about the Spider Kid during one of the many meetings with Secretary Ross and the Accords Committee. It was the first time, surprisingly, that he and Pepper had to pin Tony to his seat. Stark, there's nothing about the Accords that needs to be changed. Ross hissed out again and Tony glared at the man. Unless you suggest adding a clause to allow for the detainment of mutant freaks, like that spider freak, then this meeting is over. Tony was halfway out of his seat before Pepper already could respond. They managed to pull him back, but all of the Accords board had backed away at the fury on Tony's face. How dare you? Tony's voice was low and dark, the sound sending a shiver up everyone's spine. Ross actually looked afraid at the dark gleam in Tony's eyes. How dare you? Stuck! Ross tried to interrupt, but Tony held up a hand to silence him. Don't. There is no digging yourself out of this hole. Tony hissed, and Rhodey tightened his grip on his best friend's arm. That spider freak, as you so eloquently called him, is more of a hero than any of the Avengers combined. Sure, he doesn't help out in the world. Sure, he doesn't handle the world crisis level events. But he helps the little people. In the short time he has been active, 
He has done more good for New York than you've done for the entire fucking country. New York's rates of crime... New York's rates of dangerous crimes have decreased since Spider-Man became active. The only reason he's labelled as a vigilante is because of news organisations like that shit show the Daily Bugle have labelled him so. Can you show us examples, Mr. Stuck? We have not heard of this Spider-Man in Wakanda. Nikia, T'Challa's chosen advocate, asked, and Tony nodded. He typed a few things onto his tablet, and soon videos of Spider-Man were being projected onto the screen behind Ross. The committee watched as Spider-Man rescued Cap out of trees. That had the delegates for Spain, France, Germany and Japan cooing slightly. Stopped convenience store robberies and the like. The most telling videos, however, were the ones where Spider-Man saved a bus full of children from crashing, and when he helped the FDA and when he helped the FDNY evacuate an apartment building during a large-scale fire. It seems that this Spider-Man is not causing harm. If anything, these are called good head for his work, the delegate from England said, provided he continues to work on the small scale. Ross, you call him a mutal? You call him a mutant freak again, and I will end you. Not just your career, but you as well. Tony hissed out before Pepper could stop him. For the rest of that particular meeting, Ross kept his mouth shut. That was one of the last meetings Secretary Ross attended as the US Accords liaison. Pepper and Tony succeeded in convincing President Ellis to remove him from the position. The next time Spider-Man was brought up was when Happy advised Rhodey and Pepper of his plan to get Tony out of his depressive funk. While supportive, Rhodey was still hesitant. He had been friends with Tony since college, and he knew that Tony didn't respond well to children or teenagers. So, Color Rhodey surprised when Tony joined him for lunch on the day Happy had planned to implement his plan. During their lunch, Tony had spoken only of the kid, and Rhodey was excited to see an almost immediate change in his friend. He was even more surprised when Tony decided to clean himself up and his lab for the kid's arrival. He was even more surprised when Tony decided to clean himself and his lab up for the kid's arrival. When he first met Peter out of his suit, Rhodey was stunned. This kid looked like a wide-eyed puppy. He certainly didn't look like he could lift an airplane boarding tunnel, but looks could be deceiving. Tony was working closely with the boy, on what looked to be a robot of some sort, but what surprised Rhodey most was the smile on Tony's face. When Peter referred to him as... When Peter referred to him as Lieutenant Colonel Mr. War Machine Roadster, Rhodey couldn't help but choke. No one ever used all his titles. It was ridiculous. Then, to top it off, Peter ended up calling him Mr. Rhodey, and he knew Tony would never let him live it down. Rhodey had felt bad about interrupting their lab time, but Tony needed food, and the kid probably had homework or something he had to do. Over dinner, Tony had been animated in his discussion about what he and Peter had been doing, and Pepper and Rhodey shared conspiratorial glances between bites of food. The next time Brody saw Peter was a week and a half after their initial introduction. Brody had walked into Tony's lab in search of his friend, but found only the teenager. Peter was typing something into a stark pad that appeared to be connected to some sort of robot. Hi, kid, Brody said as he entered, and Peter turned sharply. Hi, Mr. Brody, Peter replied, and Brody laughed softly. Mr. Stark isn't here. Well, obviously. Um, Miss Pepper called him to sign some things. But he should be back soon. Not a problem. Do you mind if I wait here for him? Rhodey asked and Peter shook his head furiously. Not at all. Would you like a smoothie? Peter asked and at the word, Dummy let out an excited chirp. Before Rhodey could reply, Dummy zoomed towards him with a tray in his claw. On the tray were three different smoothies and Rhodey reluctantly took the pinkish coloured one. He watched as the team took the purple coloured one and patted the bottom on the floor. I've been warned about these. 
Tony says to never drink anything Dummy gives me. Rody said hesitantly, but when he looked up, Peter was sipping on his own drink with a happy smile on his face. Rody closed his eyes and took a mouthful. He was pleasantly surprised. Okay, why has Tony been lying to me? Oh, he hasn't, sir, Peter said with a giggle. The first smoothie Dummy made me was made of kale and motor oil. It was absolutely awful. I could see that he was trying, though, so I offered to teach him how to make them one day. Tony left me here alone one afternoon last week, so I decided it was time to teach Dummy how not to poison us. He's worked so hard. Peter was affectionately patting Dummy on the arm, and the bot was letting out chirps and beeps of contentment. Well, I am definitely coming back for smoothies again. Brody said fondly, and Peter laughed. Hear that, bud? Peter said as he rubbed his dummy like a puppy. Mr. Lieutenant Cos... Come on. <laughs> Mr. Glo... Mr. Lieutenant Colonel War Machine Rose is going to come back and drink more smoothies. Good job, buddy. You poisoned him, my friends, kid. Tony's voice was calmed as he entered the room, and both Peter and Roddy turned to raise him. I leave for five minutes, and you're about to kill my best friend. Betrayal! Mr. Stark, I would never hurt Mr. Rody. Peter said as he rolled his eyes. Dummy picked up the tray and rolled it over to his creator. Try one, it's really good! Just so you know, everything goes to Pepper if I die. Tony said as he hesitantly took the smoothie. Rody had to smirk at the excited chirps from Dummy and the excited nods from Peter. Tony took a sip and Rody's laughter burst forth as Tony's eyes widened in surprise. Well damn! Did you teach him this? When Peter nodded hesitantly. When Peter nodded hesitantly, Tony approached him and wrapped an arm around the kid's shoulder. You could have knocked Rody over with a feather. His best friend, who never showed affection, was openly hugging someone besides him or Pepper? How's the coding going? Tony asked, forgetting Rody was in the room, but the other man didn't mind. Good, Mr. Stark. I'm almost done, I think. I just need you to check it before I activate it, Peter replied, and Tony nodded. Well, good. How about while Tony looks over your code, you and I go and grab some burgers? Rody said suddenly, and both Peter and Tony turned to him. I mean, I'm starving, and I know you two must be. Is that alright, Mr. Stark? Peter asked, and Tony smiled at the boy. He nodded, and Peter turned back to Rody. I'd like that, Mr. Rody. Rody led the teen out of the lab and down to his car. When they were settled, Rody drove out of the car park and headed towards the diner that he and Tony both enjoyed. They ordered enough food to feed a small army, and sat down in a booth while they waited. So, what made you become a superhero, kid? Rody asked as they waited for their food. Peter took a sip of the milkshake Rody had gotten him, and mulled over his question. I got my powers a year ago, Peter started to explain. Field trip, mishap. Anyway, I tried to ignore everything. I tried to stay normal, and pretend everything was okay. But then, my Uncle Ben and I were out at the store, and there was a robbery. You stopped him? Rody asked, but Peter shook his head. Uncle Ben did, Peter replied softly. Rody tensed up, because he imagined he knew where the story was going. He was a police officer. He stepped in and got shot. I just watched it all happen. Rody moved so that he was now seated beside the kid and pulled him into a side hug. Peter cuddled into his side, and Rody rested his hand on the teen's head. He always used to say to me, with great power comes great responsibility. After he died, I couldn't just ignore my powers, so now I use them to help people. So now I use them to help people. Peter finished. He wiped his eyes on his sleeve of his hoodie and started blushing furiously. I'm so sorry, Mr. Rose. I can't believe I just cried on you. Who does that? 
It's okay, Pete. Rudy said with a smile. Peter looked up at him at the nickname and smiled back. Your uncle would be so proud of you. Thanks, Peter replied. All right, it's getting too mushy here, Rudy said, attempting, attempting to lighten the atmosphere. Do you want to hear some embarrassing stories about Tony? Peter listened intently as Rudy launched into as many embarrassing stories as he could remember from his and Colli from his and Tony's college days. He had just finished telling the story about the FedEx man calling Tony Mr. Stank when their order was ready. Peter and Rudy carried three large bags of takeout back to the car and started their journey back to the tower. Oh, I never thanked you, Rudy said, and Peter looked up at him in confusion. For spy do. That little drone has been a godsend. I'm glad you like him, Peter said with an embarrassed blush. When Happy told me that you had been paralysed, I wanted to send you something. But since I didn't really know you, I had no idea what to get you. I spent ages researching paralysis, and the main thing other people with paralysis mentioned on the sites I visited was how difficult it can be to sometimes retrieve items. Especially if they're alone in a room or a house. I figured I could make a drone to help you out. Well, kid, he has been great. At first, Tony and I used him to get us lunch. But now I use him at the base. He delivers messages for me and everything. Rody said, and Peter smiled proudly. Keep up that kind of work, and I might have to start headhunting you for the military. When they arrived back at the tower, Peter and Rody walked into the lab and Peter let out a squeal. Tony had obviously finished coding BB-8 because the little spherical droid became barreling over to them. Hey, buddy! <coughs> Hi, buddy! Peter said. He dropped to his knees and rubbed the droid's belly. The droid beeped at him, and Peter looked up at Tony with a bright smile enough to lighten a building. Mr. Stark, he looks awesome! Oh, you're work, kid. Your coding was spot on. Tony replied as he picked up the abandoned bag of burgers from the floor beside Peter. He's just been rolling around waiting for you to come back. This is so cool, Peter said. He pulled out his phone and started videoing the droid as he rolled around Peter. The team was laughing excitedly and Rody noticed the fond look on Tony's face. So, I thought you should know. I offered the kid a job with the military. Rody teased as he pulled a burger from one of the bags. Tony's head shot up and he glared at his friend. No, back off, platypus. Underroofs is mine, Tony said, only half teasingly. He then turned to where Peter was taking selfies with the bot. Underroofs, no working for the military. You hear me? You are my intern. Don't let Rudy steal you away with delusions of grandeur. Why would I ever leave here, Mr. Stark? Peter said absentmindedly as he and BB-8 made their way over to the two adults. I mean, the offer to work at the military was great and all, but there's nowhere I'd rather be than Stark Tower. Sorry, Mr. Rody. As Rody teased and pleaded with Peter, Tony pressed a few buttons on his Stark pad. The board appeared again, and Tony placed a check mark against Rody's name. Rody became the third Avenger to fall to the Peter Factor. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I've always loved that chapter. That is amazing. Rody basically immediately seeing Tony, seeing Peter as his nephew, just, oh my god, that thing about talking with Ben, and I love that bit with BB-8 and Peter just being so excited, it's great. I love how Peter does this, he approaches you with charm, you see his vulnerability and his strength, and then he goes back to being charming again, and you're just like, yeah, I'm gonna protect this kid, nothing bad will happen to him again. I love that about Peter. That's just his charm, isn't it? Despite all the multitudes of terrible things that have happened to that boy. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Have a... Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.